Welcome to Celebrity Liar. My name is Andrew Hill Newman, and I am psyched like silly schoolboy to be once again standing next to Valerie Aslin. <laughs> the game we play here is simple. Two celebrity guests are going to tell you the same story as if it happened to them. In truth, it only happened to one of them. Then it's going to be up to you, the audience, to decide who's, who's the, the liar. liar. And I'll be here in the chat room taking your questions and comments and passing them along to our fabulous celebrity guests. And when we tally the votes, I will read the results. Yes, you will. So get on into that chat room if you are not already. And if you are not already and you're still on the front page of theroomlive.com, click on that bar down there that says chat and view larger. It'll bring you to a new page where you can do just those things. But let's get to our fabulous celebrity guests. Tonight, we have two very smart, talented and accomplished comedians and actors. They are so accomplished, in fact, that one of these guests has been featured in a great new book about the most thought-provoking comedians of our generation. And the other guest wrote the book. The book yeah. is called Satiristas, and the guests are called Paul Provenza and Greg Proust. Yeah. Enough of a plug or not enough That's of a, a plug? That's a fabulous plug. Uh, when you're done watching Celebrity Liar, go to Amazon.com and buy this because it's great. It's truly great. I love my chapter a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you laugh, but that's all that matters to me. <laughs> it's all you want is uh, 60 people who are really busy not happy with what you did. <laughs> uh, you know, before the show, <laughs> Uh, Greg and Paul were sequestered in our soundproof booth, exchanging personal stories with crack producer Robin Roseanne. Uh, Robin has taken their stories, titled them, and we have put them deep within the now legendary bowl of stories. I'm going to select one at random. Paul was chosen to go first. He's going to have two minutes to tell the first story. What do you guys uh, say? We ready to do some lion? Uh, let's do some lion. I think. All right. Uh, let's uh, get it. My on. default mode. Okay. Uh, we're going to put two minutes on the clock for you, Paul. And the story that we've known. Oh, no, you picked no, it already. No, I, didn't, I don't no, have anything. There's rules. I, don't have I know, I, but I'm a rebel, baby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, Polly, the story we would like to hear from you is called Safety First. Safety First. Yeah, well, that's. Um, <clears throat> when does the clock start again? Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, I was doing a gig in Tahoe. Needless to say, it was a nightmare gig. I was miserable. <laughs> Had to fly out the next morning, early in the morning, from the Reno airport. It's snowing. There's a blizzard. I barely make it to the airport with enough time. I got hats, coats, scarves on, just bundled like crazy. It was just a miserable morning. And um, uh, uh, I have to go through security. And I'm going through security. And they're like, okay, oh, take, take your jacket off. I take my jacket off. And like, they take your scarf, take your scarf off. And then and you're wearing a sweater. I have to take your sweater off. And I'm like really furious at this point. And then I walk through the uh, metal detector. And they go, now you have to go back because you have to take your hat off. And, I'm, and I had not taken a shower, I was rushing to get the airport, and my, you know, take my th big bushy hair plan, and, uh, and, uh, and then I walked through the detector again, and they go, okay, now you have to take your belt off, and at this point I snapped, and I took my belt off, and then I unzipped my fly, and I dropped my trowel, and I stood there like this, they're going, all right, everybody say, we're okay here, right, right, it's really important that we're all safe and everything, and all of a sudden, it was a palaver, and uh, uh, suddenly somebody was on the walkie, and uh, two security guards come over, or, I don't know what they were, they might have been soldiers at the time, with uh, guns, the whole deal, and now there's a situation. And, uh, and they're like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I just want to make sure that everybody knows that I'm a good American and we're safe. And then you, know, you, you, can't, you can't take your pants down like that. You're embarrassing people. I go, I'm, I was embarrassed. They made me take my hat off. You see my hair? I was embarrassed. <laughs> but, but you know, you got to pay a price to live in a free America. So here we go. And they're and like, no, you can't, you're embarrassing all the women. You can't do, you can't do that. Anyway. Uh, make a long story short, as I possibly can within two minutes, uh, this went on for a little while, and there was talk of a no-fly list, there was talk of jail, there was talk of you know, losing a passport and all that sort of stuff. Uh, ultimately, it ended when they uh, said to me, uh, uh, sir, pull your pants up right now <laughs> so these gentlemen can wand you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well done, and within your two minutes, uh, an extremely entertaining <laughs> and, uh, and I'll say it, a, a plausible story, uh, but I think I know someone who might beg to differ on its plausibility for Polly. I understand something similar may have happened to you, Greg. Well, it, it happened to me, and, and it was, he, he got, you know, it's mostly right. 
<laughs> I, uh, I was doing a gig in Tahoe, which, uh, uh, you know, Tahoe alone is enough. And uh, it was the winter time, and I, I was really hating the gig. So I had to leave the next morning from Reno. And it was like bitter cold. So I'm completely bundled up, and I got, you know, I got a hat on and coats and whatnot. I get to the airport, and I'm like in a rare bad mood, right? I'm hating the crowd from last night. I go through, and they go, take off your jacket. So I take off my jacket. I go back through, and they go, take off your sweater. And I'm like getting more angry. They go, take off your belt one more time through, and I, I completely lose it, right? So I take my belt off, and I pull my pants down. I'm like, are we safe? Is everyone happy now? Are we safe? Can America breathe? And uh, <laughs> so now... Uh, I've such a typical Greg Proofs thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is, is America happy now that it's all exposed and there's no, you know, danger? So uh, all of a sudden, armed, you know, cops are coming over and there's like machine guns and automatic weapons. But I've lost it so much. I'm still like, they're like, please pull your pants up. I'm like, no. This is how you know we operate here. It's a full and clear disclosure, you know, in America, and that I don't want any terrorists thinking I've got something in my pants. And. Uh, so I'll, now it's getting a little too serious and they're starting to threaten me. They're going to they're gonna put me on the no-fly list. They're not going to let me take the plane home and I'm desperate to get home. Uh, I, I haven't showered and I'm just miserable, right? And they go like, you're embarrassing everyone. I'm like, you're embarrassing everyone. I, look at me. I, my hair is flat. <laughs> I, I, I don't smell good. I feel awful. Uh, so I'm like, all right, I better deal. So at the, at the very end, of, I'll pull my pants up and they go, you have to put your pants up so that we can wand you. <laughs> God forbid you get wanded while your pants are down. Well told, sir. Uh, uh, it's amazing. Uh, I always forget how much we have in common. I know. <laughs> Almost like parallel lives. Weird. It's interesting. They both tell the same story, but it's true for only one of them. Uh, if you have any questions uh, to help you decide which one of them is telling the truth, go ahead and type them into the chat room, and Val will pass them along. Uh, if you already know who you think the liar is, go ahead and vote. I'd like to remind you that they don't want to win this vote. They want you to believe them. Whoever gets voted the liar is going to lose this round. I've got a couple questions myself, uh, beginning with you, Paul. When was this? Oh, this was uh, not too long after uh, September 11th, so it was still pretty touchy, you know. Um, but uh, at the Reno airport, it wasn't that crowded that early in the morning, you know. So uh, apparently I was, uh, uh, they could focus on me. Interesting. So it was post 9-11. Uh, and uh, Greg, where were you performing in Tahoe? Uh, Harrah's. They have a little cabaret there. Uh, <laughs> and it didn't go that well. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Dunkirk, Waterloo, you know, <laughs> that kind of. <laughs> Tahoe. <laughs> Tarawa, you know, Midway, uh, not so hot. Uh, I have a good, <laughs> strong suspicion who I think is lying, uh, but if you don't, uh, go ahead and pass your questions on Val. What do we got from the chat room? Uh, let's see. We can start out with Tandy Van. She would like to know, uh, Greg, were you wanded and, and did you make the flight? I did make the flight, and I was wanded, yeah. the, the, not in perhaps the traditional sense of wanded <laughs> that we appreciate here in Hollywood, but rather they ran the security wand over every inch of my delightfully emollated flesh. Love it. And what's weird is I'm going to do that after the show. It's going to be fun. I look forward to it's that. It's going to be fun. Uh, I would like to emollate your flesh. <laughs> Uh, there's no shot either of you were commando for this, right? I mean, this was... Uh, <laughs> no, I was no. not commando. I, I think I might have... Uh, that might have been where I drew the line if I was commando. That, that would have been out of line. But, you know, when you drop trow anywhere... Because, you know, dropping trow is funny no matter where, no matter when. It's always funny. So, you know, it's no, it's, you're not seeing anything you don't see at a beach. Uh, <laughs> and I got to ask, and I know I'm showing my own ignorance here, uh, palaver? Palaver, yeah. It's, it's um, a great word, but uh, it's escapes Palaver me. is what you use to emollify. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Emollify? This is... This is uh, <laughs> we both got back from a Dennis Miller workshop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we were there. We were there skimming the Aristotelian poetics and also reading about old F Troop episodes. <laughs> uh, uh, Val, I've decided who I think the liar is. Do we have any more questions uh, from the chat room before we close off the vote? By the way, go ahead and vote if you haven't already uh, for who you think the liar is. Is it Greg Proops or is it Paul Probenza? Which one is lying? Hmm. Well, we've got a question from Regina Falange. Uh, Paul, 
How many people were behind you in line? Uh, not many. There was just a couple. It wasn't, it wasn't that crowded a flight, but uh, they took me out of the line very quickly. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. I like it. Uh, also for Paul, Egg Bake, Egg Bake, uh, would like to know, has anyone ever told you that you look like Robert De Niro? A little bit. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Which, which is a lot of why I thought I could pull this maneuver off. Ah. I thought they wouldn't hassle De Niro. Didn't you do a brilliant sketch uh, based on the untouchable scene? With uh, uh, yes, we did do a, a sketch on uh, Comics Only way back when. I remember yeah, where, that. Where you, you appeared on and a you handful looked, of episodes. And you looked you? uncanny, and uncannily like Robert De Niro in yeah, that sketch. Yeah. So yes, I agree with you. He does look like him, but you know, better. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, we're going to close off the voting really soon. If there is one more question, we will take it. Otherwise, uh, I'm going to first share with these guys who I think is lying this time. I didn't That's see who Andrew. I think the liar is this round. Well, Let's whatever. see if you guys agree with me. Uh, any more questions or shall we close up the vote? Uh, I, I like this question. I think it's a very good question. Um, Diane Shreve would like to know, boxers or briefs? <laughs> well, what do they call what do they call those Calvin Klein's? This sort of half boxer, half brief, the oh, tight right. boxer things. What do they call those? Boxer briefs. Uh, boxer briefs. Boxer briefs. So that would be a good name for those. I like it. So yeah. the answer is both. How about you? Boxers, briefs, do oh uh, briefs? Yeah, no. Boxers are only for home. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and on that note, but, uh, I, but I must also add though. That, you know, from my experience with dropping trousers, boxers is the comedy go-to underwear. I was going to say, to be honest, boxers are the funnier one. Yeah. So if you knew we were lying, it would be boxers. Because any time anyone drops trousers in a movie, it's always, always boxers. boxers. With yeah. some kind of funny little ducks. Stripes or, or, yeah. or the pattern, yeah. yeah. Sure. Or stains. Uh, all right. I'm closing off the voting. We are going to get a result and find out who you think the liar is. We'll find out if you agree with me. And remember, they do not want to win this vote. Whoever is voted the liar is going to lose this round. Val, uh, do we have a result? We do. All right. 58% of you think that Paul is a liar. Ooh, 58% closer than I thought it would be. And I also have to say, I disagree with you. I believe Greg Proops is lying this time. It's time to find out. Uh, gentlemen, will the liar, the person who was not telling the truth, will the liar please dramatically reveal yourself by raising your hand? By dropping trowel. <laughs> <laughs> I would deny, but I don't have my comedy ones on. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, Greg, uh, because you were lying and they believed you, you get two points for oh, that. Oh, look at round. me. Two points. Wow. I don't know how this works, but it doesn't seem right. <laughs> uh, he is winning two to nothing, and you know they are not just playing for honor. Oh, no. No, there's much more at stake. They are playing for the very real yet infinitesimally small possibility of winning $64 million in tonight's Mega Millions drawing. I'm and gonna go for the big one. Uh, being the charitable celebrities that they are, I'm sure they will donate a generous yet undisclosed portion of their winnings <laughs> to some worthy charity. Uh, let's find out who those charities are. Paul, who are you playing for? I'm playing for the James Randi Educational Foundation, or JREF. They are a, uh, a, an organization founded by the amazing Randy, James Randy, for critical thinking and uh, encouraging uh, that sort of thing in schools and debunking uh, mythologies and uh, uh, all that sort of claptrap. Well, I hope we can get them millions of dollars tonight. How about you, Greg? Who are you playing for? I'm playing for the Coalition for Family Ethics. I'm joking, of course. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Paul's was just so right on, I thought. <laughs> You know, the American Nazi Party's misunderstood. <laughs> and I hope you don't mind if we talk a little bit about the mixing of the race. I'm <laughs> <laughs> playing for the LA Free Clinic, which provides health care. Oh, world. I've been there three times a week since yeah. the 70s. <laughs> love that. Love ever them. ever since you were wanted, work. you yeah. they, do, <laughs> they do fantastic work, but they need more swabs, I'll tell yeah. you that. <laughs> so I hope. <laughs> Uh, Seriously. Uh, all right. Cuts are really uh, uh, <laughs> let's move on to round two. Uh, Greg, you will be going first this time. Uh -oh. I'm going to reach once again deep within the bowl of stories. Uh, sip your water and are get you, ready. Are you, going, are you going home early the night you came up with bowl of stories? You're just like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. look, it's 530. Let's knock off. Let's go with bowl, bowl of stories. Of if you stories. have a better name for it, uh, go ahead and uh, tweet it out there and I'll, I'll have the followers vote on it. Okay, uh, you're going to tell us a story that we call The Knowledge. Oh, right, okay. So, um, 
I was doing a, a radio show in London and they let me uh, pick a guest. So I picked this poet from uh, Manchester named John Cooper Clark, who's uh, an old, you know, tone punk poet from the, the days of The Clash and uh, Joy Division and whatnot. And so I get him on the show and he was a mad heroin addict in the old days. And I get him on the show and he gets on and uh, we're doing like uh, ra Radio 4 or whatever. He, he fuck this and fuck that, right? He won't stop swearing. The producer's losing her mind. Uh, we wrap up the show. He's hilarious. So we repair to this bar across the street and he proceeds to have in rapid succession about four or five martinis, right? And we're chatting amiably. I'm with my wife and him and we, um, he splits from the tower. I, I got a guy, a kid, I'll kiss him. Yeah. So he goes downstairs and he's gone for like a year, right? <laughs> because he was shooting up. So he comes back up and uh, we're like, well, let's get a cab. And uh, so we get a cab with him and he's wicked high. My wife's like, I want to stop uh, 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 at, at this deli, right, in, in Covent Garden. So we stop and he's in the cab with me. And he's wicked loaded, right? He's drunk and he's on heroin. Uh, he, he, we're smoking a joint in the cab now, right? My wife's inside and now he's like too high. He's like, we, I love you, mate, you know, and like kind of all over me and shit. My wife gets back in the cab. Now he's all over both of us, right? And, and I love you too much and, uh, and this and that. Uh, so we're like, well, where do you want to go, Johnny? And he's like, uh, uh, Highbury. So we were like, at this point, he's got us both in like a headlock, right? You know, I love you guys and I'm, you know, like you're loving us too much. And uh, so we, we pull up in front of the Highbury station and we, boot him out of the cab, right? And um, he totters off uh, into the distance. He looks like an insect. He's like six and a half feet tall with Johnny Thunder's hair, right? And uh, <laughs> the cab driver turns to us from the back, right, in Le the London black cab and goes, well, I thought we handled that well. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I now remember that the knowledge is what they call that London uh, yeah. cab test, but they have to know all the streets and whatnot. Uh, very well told and entertaining, but I understand something similar may have happened to you. I can't believe you also know John Cooper Clark. I know, <laughs> that is, uh, what are the odds, really? So I was, uh, I was doing a gig over in London and um, had to do some promo on the radio and uh, went up to the radio thing. And I had done so much promo here in America where, you know, the language is very very specific you can't say you know typical things and um uh and on the show with me is john cooper clark this real rock and roll poet i mean he's i i actually found out i knew his work because i had read trade train spotting and there's some reference to john cooper john cooper clark in there and uh, i found his work and i was like he looks like sid vicious's drug dealer <laughs> and uh he's big, <laughs> totally heavy metal punk you'd swear to god you, you know had a guitar with him and um he's just wasted he is high as a kite cursing up a blue streak and at first i was really taken aback i was like oh, you can't say that stuff on the radio and they're like oh no you're here in england apparently you can and uh it's fuck this fuck that and we bugger this and bugger that and um uh, after the thing is over we get along like a house of fire and he's like come on let's go across for a couple of drinks so we go to this pub across the street because there you go. I was with my girlfriend at the time uh who was greg's wife Oddly enough my girlfriend was Greg's wife and um, <laughs> um, uh, so we go to the pub uh, across the street and uh, get wasted and then he's like you know let's get something to eat so we hail a cab and uh, and uh, we're riding around he knows where this deli is he's telling the guy you know get take a fucking left take a fucking right and uh, we stop at this deli my girlfriend goes in to get some food and, and now he whips out a joint and uh, oh I, I forgot to mention that at the uh, one he was so hyper but then when we were ha having a few drinks he disappears for a little while and he goes up to the men's room comes back all of a sudden, he's nice, even keeled, and nice. Guy. We realized he had been doing heroin. So this guy's—it's like ten in the morning at this point, <laughs> and uh, 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 and uh, so. Uh, he starts lighting up a joint in the black cab, and I go, you know what, I'm not from here. Apparently, you can say those things on the radio, and I guess you can get high in a cab. <laughs> and uh, so by the time my girlfriend gets back, he's just wasted, and he's just like, he tries to, she, I think he was hitting on us. He's like molesting us, and, and like it was getting a little bit weird. And, um, uh, and he said, where are you going? I said, we're in Knightsbridge. And he said, well, I'm going on to Highbury, and cab took us on. And uh, he gets out of the cab, and there's just we, my girlfriend. I just kind of, whoo! And he goes, uh, he turns around, and he goes, "Well, I thought we handled that quite well, didn't we?" <laughs> uh, well told on your part as well. Uh, it is quite a very colorful tale. Uh, well, he's a colorful character. If you think you know who's lying, go ahead and vote right now. But if you have any questions for either Paul or Greg, go ahead and send them in through the chat room. Uh, my first question is for you, Greg. 
And were you? you? Were you hosting this show? Were you like a guest host, or were you a guest on the show? I, I, it made it sound like you had him on as your guest. I time. was a, I was guest hosting a show in London, and they let me pick who I wanted on, and I had Stuart Lee, the comedian, and John Cooper Clark that morning. This was ten years ago, maybe. Interesting. Uh, and. Did you know him before, or were you just a fan? I of did. I met him at gigs, and I'd gone to see his gigs, and I'd hang out with him, and yeah. And did you already know he had this proclivity for? He was a famous. Hero. He had taken all his uh, rec He had, he was on the same record label as um, uh, uh, Joy Division and all the Martin Hamnick groups from Manchester. So he was part of that crowd. He had famously taken his advance and blown all of it, like twenty thousand uh, pounds on H. One of his best jokes was he'd always go. I used to smuggle heroin into, I used to smuggle condoms into Ireland inside bags of heroin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Val, do we have any questions from the chat room? Oh yes, many, many. It's a, it's a flare, I must say, if that's a description of our chat room. Uh, Boston Tracy would like to know, what was the drug dealer's name? And I, she might be looking for him, I don't know, but what, what was his name? Who, what? For, no, I, I said that John no, Cooper he looked like, like a drug dealer. Oh, Sid Vicious's yeah. drug dealer. Sorry yeah. about that, Tracy. We're yeah. both like. But Tracy. actually, I happen to have his drug dealer's name. Oh, so yeah. I'll, <laughs> I'll uh, get that out to you. a flashing button underneath. <laughs> Tracy, that's why I take notes. Oh, oh, yeah. oh. <coughs> his, his name was Dougie. Fucking salted, salted, like mate. Oh, here's salted. a, a question like for you, Greg. Uh, <laughs> you say the producer was going crazy. Do they have one of those uh, delay buttons? Uh, oh, absolutely, yeah. Radio? No, a few of them got snuck through, but yeah, they hit the, the cough button, as it were. And on oh your God. British radio, they're allowed to swear. Is that correct? Yeah, well, they, I mean, you are. It's not like here where you get FCC fines or whatever, but they discourage it. They, you know, it's, it's a certain civility they prefer. You know, I mean, if, if he were to throw it out once or twice, it probably wouldn't have mattered, but it was just a blue streak. Sure, sure. Yeah. Val, what else we got? Well, we have a, a related question here from, from Egg Bake. Where can I get the drugs? <laughs> where, where can you get the drugs? Um, Greg, why was he upset and swearing? Oh, on the radio? Did you, yeah, did you Oh, that's him? just how he talks. He, oh, okay. he was, you know, he's, he Seriously. speaks in the vernacular, yeah. I like it. Yeah. I like it. Maybe I'll do that on the next show. What do you think? Oh, could you imagine? Oh, sad moment here. Uh, it, uh, it got really serious. I, I got really into that. Everybody's like, oh. Normally that costs me three ninety nine a minute. I can just sit right in. Uh, I have decided who I think is lying, and if you have, a go ahead and vote. I'm going to share uh, my guess with our guest. Well, That's who I think is lying this time. Uh -huh. Uh, let's see if we agree. We'll take uh, one more question if you got one. Otherwise, we'll close up the voting. What do we got, Val? Boston Tracy would like to know, what deli was it? Carlucci's. Wow. In Common Garden. Yeah, I like that. Fast right near Neil Yard's Dairy. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, you know, I went once. Ask Boston Tracy if she's ever been there. Oh. Carlucci O's, in fact. I can just say that. I can speak that. Yeah, uh, Paul, you could ask been her. There. I got yeah. nothing to say to Tracy. Oh. <laughs> she knows why. Yeah. Tracy's taking hits tonight. Uh-oh. Uh, Boston Tracy and Regina Flange and all of our other regulars from the chat room, welcome back. It's nice to see all of Boston you here. <laughs> <clears throat> I am going to close off the voting, and we are going to find out if you agree with me. Who do you think the liar is? Is it Greg Proops or is it Paul Provenza? Uh, go ahead and vote if you haven't, because it's about to get tabulated. It's tabbed. Okay. It's tabbed, guys. Uh, we've got 80% think that Paul's the liar. Ooh, I have to say 80%. I agree with you wholeheartedly, and not just because of the speed with which you answered Carlucci's. It just felt like a very uh, poopsie and tell, <laughs> I might say. Uh, so please, uh, will the real liar uh, reveal himself by dramatically raising his hand? Well, uh, I would normally raise my right hand, but this story took place in England, so I'm going to raise oh. my left hand. <laughs> All right. Uh, Greg, because you were telling the truth, you only get one point for winning that round, but that means the score is presently three to nothing. But no, never I fear. think you'll find the score is uh, actually uh, completely arbitrary. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but I wrote it down, so that makes it more okay, definite. All right. uh, okay, so right now it's three to nothing, but Paula, you do have a chance uh, to catch up because of the lightning round. Uh, the lightning round works like this. Before I bet the it show, goes fast. Like lightning. Okay. Uh, uh, 
Uh, Paul and Greg were both kind enough to send me lists of both facts and supposed facts about themselves. I have taken those lists mm -hmm. and I have uh, randomly or not so randomly selected some of the items from the list and typed them up on these cards. Uh, so first we're going to start with Greg reading his facts to Paul. And Paul, you are going to answer like lightning to each one of these whether you think it is true or a lie. About Greg. So yes, these are this is things right. he's saying about himself. Okay. Do you believe they are true or a lie? Okay. Like lightning. <clears throat> like lightning. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Did you say lightning or lighting? Because <laughs> uh, lighting takes forever. I uh, know. It does. Uh, no, like <laughs> it does. If we're having a lighting round, we can we, take like 20 minutes. <laughs> and we got a union break? Yeah, <laughs> you know. Walking lunch. <laughs> it's just in, yeah, let's fix that. Uh, okay, so I read him off and, and then Yes, Paul. and he will answer in between each and I will record his answers. Okay, are we going? Yes. Oh, right. <clears throat> My first wife was Spanish. Uh, I believe that's true. I have never been divorced. Uh, I do not believe that's true. I believe it's false. I went to Florence, but I skipped the Uffizi. <laughs> that sounds very true. <laughs> I studied botany. Uh, I believe that's false. I have not ridden a horse in 30 years. Uh, <laughs> without judgment, I'm going to go, I think that's probably true. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, we'll find out how Paul did in a moment. Now it is time for Paul to read his list to you, Greg, uh -oh. and you shall answer like lightning. Okay, Greg. sure. <clears throat> we or ready? as lightning would. Yes, yes. indeed. In the manner of lightning. <laughs> Are we ready? Yes, please. Sure. Okay. I got into a fight at the Museum of Tolerance. <laughs> uh, I'm true. <laughs> <laughs> True. I once, that, that's disturbing me. I once ate 14 slices of French toast in one sitting. Mm, gosh, that sounds true, too. <laughs> true. Uh, I played the clarinet in concert at Carnegie Hall. Uh, oh, no, that sounds true. So, oh, I'm terrible at this. False. <laughs> um, I'm so gullible. I wrestled Ann Coulter to the ground. Oh, I hope you did that. True. <laughs> Gina Gershon tried to get me to sleep with her. Mm, Paul, come on. <laughs> oh, was that one of your things? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, um, tr true. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's find out how Greg did. Uh, Paul, you said you got into a fight at the Museum of Tolerance. He said that was true. That was false. That no, was false. No, that, no, was, uh, that was actually Mel Gibson. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he did eat 14 slices of French toast in one sitting, so you do get a point oh. for that. Um, he did play the clarinet in concert at Carnegie it. Hall. You said it was false. You did? I did. Wow. You're more uh, impressed with that than the 14 slices of French toast? <laughs> I ate 14 slices of French toast while playing the clarinet at Carnegie Hall. <laughs> now I'm impressed. Uh, he did wrestle Ann Coulter to the ground, yes. so you get a point for that one. And a good feeling inside. Yeah. Uh, and... Uh, Gina Gershon did not try to get him to sleep with her. No, uh, it was Andy McDowell. <laughs> she tried to get Andy McDowell to sleep with her? <laughs> no, I like your story better than mine. That's hot. Yeah, I know. What is possible? Okay, what is I, did I say true? <laughs> you did say true. So oh, fooey. Uh, you got two points, making the score right now five to nothing, which means, Paul, you got to ace all of these. Let's find out how you did. He said he hadn't ridden a horse in 30 years. You said true. That's true. You got a point for that one. He said he studied botany. You said that's false. It is false. You get a point for that one. He went to Florence and skipped the Uffizi. You said true. That is true. It's now five to three. Whoa. You only need two more. Wow. I got my eyes on I you. I know, buddy. <laughs> he said he has never been divorced. You said that's false. Sadly, that's true, and you lose. Uh, uh, he said his first uh, he wife get was divorced, Spanish. And I have to suffer? <laughs> you said that was true. That is false. So by a margin of five to three, by a margin of two points, actually, and a score of five to three, Greg, you have won Celebrity Liar. Thank you. <laughs> Nicely played, sir. Which means, you, sir, Paulie, for being here, just for being here, you get the consolation prize of one shot at up to $64 million. And but you Greg, know what? Just because I didn't win, I'm not giving it to charity. Okay, you oh. <laughs> Ranker. Take that, amazing Randy. <laughs> uh, Greg, you get five shots at winning $64 Great. million. When do they draw? Uh, they drew it about 29 <laughs> minutes ago. So okay. you may already be a winner. 
Uh, I would like to thank both Greg well, and Paul. Well, it seems to me like another game show to find out if he, if he actually won. I think <laughs> I don't think you're thinking big enough with this TV thing here. We're gonna. It's not TV. It's the it's the it's the internet. That's the TV of the future. Ah, yes, it is. <laughs> and speaking of TV of the present, you can catch Paul Provenza on The Green Room with Paul Provenza on Showtime, and you can see Greg Proops on True Jackson VP on The Nickelodeon. I want to thank both of these very talented and funny gentlemen for coming here and playing our game tonight. Uh, I would also <laughs> like to thank Valerie Aslan for doing a great job. I would like to thank room. Valerie Aslan Once again, for doing a great job. And doing the robot uh, during the slight delay before the show. I want to thank the Fancy. indefatigable Melanie Marquez for everything she does for us. And of course, I would like to thank <laughs> Robin Ruzan, Michael Davis, Matt Edwards, and everybody else here in the roomlive.com that make this show possible. Uh, and if this is the first time you've come to the roomlive.com, please come back on other nights. There's a lot more here than just us. There's cooking shows, there's sports shows, there's comedy, there's And where are you going to find any of that kind of stuff? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of great stuff here. Uh, please I come thought back. My computer was only good for some things. <laughs> I had no, I had no idea it was a whole world beyond porn. Oh. <laughs> there is a little bit more, and most of it is us, uh, and most of us is uh, you watching. So thanks very much for coming and clicking on us tonight. Good night. <laughs>